So your your sirs, I mean uh, yesterday we have seen right. So how to? Anyone anyone is having any doubt in yesterday's program? Anyone is having any doubt? Yeah. So now I'll upload this uh, program to all of you. One minute. Just one minute. I'll upload this program. So again, I'll forget it. Yeah, just one minute. Huh? Just one minute. Huh? I upload, are you able to see now? Just see. Hibernate related. In the Google Classroom link, I uploaded.
Everyone is able to see the download. Aaron is able to see the download of that, I mean, Google Classroom link. I uploaded just now the material. Are you able to see that? You're able to see, right? Okay, just download it. Okay. And uh, right, just to download it. All right, then. So what you do is in the meanwhile, just set up in the in your in your uh, program. I will also yes, it's from Saturday notes. And also, what you do is I'll just show you. Just take your uh, if you're. So use, okay, what I'll do is you just, uh, so this uh, table, create this table script. Okay, I'll be just back in 10 minutes. Just set up this program in your uh, system and just practice this. Whatever the program that I sent, just set up that. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. Set up the hyper hibernate program. And in MySQL database, the script. Whatever the script is being said, okay? Just, just do this. I'll be back in 10 minutes.
Yeah, hi, Al, I'm back. Uh, so everyone is able to download the program and all that, right? Now, whatever we have seen, everyone understood this, any doubts here? And uh, I'll tell you what is the use of this transaction. Like for example, for example, So I'll tell you what is the use of this transaction. Say for example, I have two tables. Say there is two tables, for example. One is one is actually students table. And another one is fees details table. Now, say, say for example, if there is no transaction, say for example, if there is no transaction, So what will happen is first one. Let us assume there is no transaction. So we insert data in students table. Next we insert data in piece details table. Okay. So let us do like this. Suppose uh, what happens, say, for example, if this operation is success and if this operation is success, so, so for a particular student ID, the table will be like this. You will have a student ID, a roll number. Okay. And in fees details for that particular role number, for the particular role number, what is the fees paid? So here, so in the student table, we'll have the role number, student name. Okay. Generally, if I take the tables in detail, it will be like this. So I'll have now student table, student state. So in that we have roll number, student name. So roll number. Next is a student name. Right. And then we'll have like kind of uh, student uh, age, something like this. And in fees details table, we'll have the columns like this. So we'll have the fees ID. Next is the amount to amount paid fees paid date and the student number so it will be like this so fees id right and then we'll have like kind of uh okay amount paid okay 
and then we'll have a column called paid date date and then the roll number right so now we'll have like for this roll number 100 ramesh age 20 so the if you go to his fees details so you'll have the roll number 100 so what is the fees id fees id is 1 next amount paid is say some 10000 rupees and when he paid some so and so date february 2023 something date Okay. Now, now actually you are inserting that here, inserting in fees data. So when you insert the data in students table, this record got inserted. And when you insert data in fees table, you, you, this record got inserted. But there might be some scenarios where, I mean, I'm just, see, I'm not talking about Hibernate or uh, any specific thing. I'm talking generally about database management system. Okay about the transactions. I, I'm telling about what is transactions. Now, what happens if, for example, I'm trying to insert the data in students table. This record got inserted, but when I'm trying to insert in fees, de fees details table, uh, there is some error. That means the data, say I'm trying to insert, One more stu student roll number, 101. So his name is Ravi. And his age is 21. So this record we got inserted by this statement. So this record got inserted from this statement. Now, <clears throat> now when I'm trying to enter, Now, when I'm trying to enter the fee details table, when I'm trying to enter the fee details table uh, for the student uh, Ravi, that got error, that led to an error. Why it got error means there might be so many reasons like uh, network failure, okay? Your database might, uh, network failure might be there or some data issue might have come but some error and because of that because of that the fee because of that the fees related the fee details related to this student did not get inserted now in the you you will have the record in the students table for ravi but for ravi you will not see the data in the fees table so this is called this is called data inconsistency okay this scenario the data is present in this student's table, but the data is not present here. So this is called data inconsistency. Data inconsistency. Okay. Now, Right. Now there might be one more scenario. The data in the students table did not get it, but the data in the fees ta phase tables got inserted. Suppose now I'm trying to insert one more student, one more student fees details like one, two. Some amount paid is say ten thousand. Then I'll say February twenty three and roll number. I'll say some 
110. But this got inserted successfully. But uh, for this roll number 110, there is no student record. So this is also a data inconsistency. Okay. In order to solve these kind of issues, we should have transaction. In order to solve data inconsistency issues, In order to solve this kind of data inconsistencies, we need to apply transactions. So now what will happen in transaction is, so we'll begin a transaction. And uh, here we'll say end transaction. We also call this as committed transaction. So here we, we in between begin and end, we put some database operations. Now we say insert into student table. Then insert into Feeds details table. Now, when it starts a transaction, right, then insert in students table. Now, you know what you do, what it will do? This will not insert uh, in the table directly. Remember, your database will maintain a transactional log. A transactional log is made. So in this transactional log, first the student data is inserted, next fees details is inserted. And then whenever we say commit transaction, the data from the transaction log is pushed, is pushed to your student's table and student fees table. Okay. Now, suppose if there is a, suppose this is fine, both are success. But what happens is fee details is, uh, is failed. At the time, your transaction log will see only one entry, only the student's entry, but there is no entry of fee details. And you know, well, when we do a commit transaction, it will not commit the transaction because it will see that one insert got failed, but one insert got succeed. Your transaction log, log will not commit the data into the tables. Okay. And it will, it will, it will delete here. It will delete the data. Okay. So when When all DB operations under one transaction, when all DB operations under one transaction uh, are successfully executed, then the transaction commits. The transaction commits the data to the data to the tables. Commits means saves saves the data to tables. Now, when any of the DB operations under a transaction fails. 
space. Then, 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 then all the DB operations will get rolled back. Rolled back means they are not committed, they are not safe. Now, if I, if I take now in the same scenario now, your fees details did not get inserted, but students table got inserted. Now your transaction, when you when transaction, what it will do? It will delete these entries and not push the table. Now you will neither have the record in, you will not have the record in students table. You will also not have the record in fees table. See, it is like this, as if the, in both tables, the record Ravi should be present or in both tables, Ravi's record should not be present. So, if, if, if the record is present in the student table, means this, that record should be present for the corresponding roll number. Okay, this is 101, right? This is 101. So, so what will happen is now so what will happen is now either the data should be present in both tables or data should not be present in the both tables. So this feature is called, this feature is called atomicity. Atomicity. This feature is called atomicity. So your hibernate, your hibernate will expect all the DB operations to be ended. Even see, here I'm doing only one operation, but still we need transactions. See, here we're inserting only in students table, that's all. Even if you have only one table also, that should be under transaction. Okay. So hibernate will always... will always expect hibernate will always expect db operations to be under one transaction Be under transactions. Even if there is one DB operation also, that should be executed in one transaction. So that is the reason we are using session dot get transaction begin and get transaction commit and under between this we will do the DB options. Carry it out till now. Right. So let us know 
see from hyper see earlier from we have created a table like this right like this we created a table right but from hibernate itself we can create a table how we'll see just one minute i'll say you can use in place of i'll say hibernate ddl auto generation see the question is in place of mysql can we use oracle yes provided provided in form.xml you should change this from mysql to oracle and then in the configuration hibernate configuration file here you have to change from mysql dialect to oracle dialect all right then now we will see how we can generate let me create one I'll copy this in uh, I don't have oracle database but the same concept just to change that mysql version and then uh, mysql dialect in the configuration Okay. Now let us not take this. I'm going to copy here. Okay. So here I'll create an entity class. New class. I'll create an employee class. Okay. So here I'll say at the rate entity. table name equal to employee okay i told you this yesterday right entities map to a class and this entity is mapped to a table with the name of this table okay then what i'll do 
அத்திரட் ஐடி சேம் ப்ரோக்ராம் ஹவு டு ஜென்ரேட் ஃப்ரம் ஹைபர் நெட் தென் ஐல் சே பிரைவேட் ஸ்ட்ரிங் employee name and here I'll say operate column emp underscore name for name next is uh, next also I'll have now one more column employee or something like uh, role so i'll just say employee role now let me generate now setters and getters So, I'll just check these columns. Okay. So, you want to employ dot java with this. And then, what I'll do is, now in copy this hibernate configuration file here okay here i'll create one database yeah employee deep i'll just say i'll create one already employee db is here. i'll say create my employee db. and then here i'll just say property name i'll say hbm hbm to ddl dot auto okay and here i'll say create and i'll say create so what this will do is this property will scan will scan the entity class okay okay so this class this will scan the entity class and generate okay on on create tables we can say tables in the database that means it will scan the entity class and create a table automatically and create the columns also automatically 
So that's all. Okay. Now, if I run this program, okay, I'll just run this program. Okay. This program actually, I'm trying to run the program. Yeah, this I did not put this on, right? So let me. Let me do this session factory. I'll just create a session factory. That's all. And just tell say employee dot class. And here I'll say factory dot close. That's all. I'm not doing anything. Just I'm creating the session factory. Now, when session factory is getting created, How it is getting created from Hibernate configuration XML file. Okay, from Hibernate configuration XML file, when it is reading, now it will see this property, hbdm 2 d to create, and automatically, 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 the employee table is created. I will show you this. Unknown. Okay, this database is not there. Let me create the database. Let me run this again. Now you see, see something here, some error you got, you see. You got some error. You have any errors? Employee ID, not only employee name, employee role. <laughs> Let us see some. Okay, I think my database is 5.1. I think that is not supported.
Saying what I have to do is there is some error here. I think what we have to do is in Hibernate configuration file, I should say here MySQL file direct because you're using MySQL MySQL file. Now you see, I think table got created. Now let me now search for us so in this table. Show tables. Now you see the student table. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I think here I have to change. Why still student? Uh, okay, okay. Use. I used the wrong DB. Show tables. I see employee got created. From the hyper network. Show create. Like. See, this table got automatically generated. Only thing is here we have to change in hibernate configuration. We have to change MySQL five direct, not MySQL direct, because since we are connecting with MySQL five, MySQL five above any version, it will be MySQL five direct. So this is a property, DDL auto creation. The table is created, right? Automatically, DDL is nothing but data definition language that automatically got created. Okay, with this uh, spring, with this jar, jar, GRPC. Just one minute. Just one minute. Everyone understood this? So just I just if you define this property, just if you define this property, the table will be created automatically with these column names. Yeah, you can use Oracle also. See, Oracle SQL and MySQL SQL are almost same. Okay. See, I wanted to show you one thing. Just one minute. Huh? Just one minute. I wanted to show you one. I am searching for that my old file. One.
just one minute eh? i'm just i prepared one uh, Okay, I prepared one tech for Hibernate actually. Yeah, this is the tech. Can you see? I'll share you. I'll share you this. So we are going to see. In Hibernate, we are going to create this data model design. Like, one author is associated with, uh, just like if you see in this example, if you see here, student table is associated with fees tables. So one student ID here will be mapped with this role number. I mean, this student role number is mapped with this roll number and for this student this is the fees details now we'll expand now this kind of similar thing like let us take like kind of a book uh you a book related application books related okay where an author will write the books just like you just like amazon books how an author will write a book and publish it in amazon and you will provide reviews right so that's what here See, one author is associated with author details like this. See, author will have author ID, name, and author details will have like uh, his qualification, his experience, everything will have in details. Okay. So, one author is associated with one author, but many books can be written by one author, right? So, one author can write many books, right? So that's why from book to author, it is a many to one. From author to author details, one to one. So one author is associated with one author details. But you can think like this, see. Say you have an author table. You have an author details table. Next, you have a book table. You have a book reviews table and then you have a reader table. So now this will be your author table. In this you will have author ID, author name, okay, author, uh, author ID, author name and you'll also have like author uh, something like author phone number for example in author details table what will be there details table you will have now We'll have no author digital what will be there. We'll have an ID. Then you'll have like kind of uh, what are the details you have. Say for example, uh, you can have you know, author uh, experience next author qualification these are the author details 
Okay. Similarly, similarly, we will have book table. Book, books table, you can say. Books table. So what will be there in the books table? There will be book ID, book name, and author ID. So there will be book ID, book name, and then you'll have the author ID. Okay, next is uh, what will be there in the reviews table? So you'll have a review ID, review description, and the book ID. So review ID, and then review description. And then we'll have the, what you say, book ID. Next, we'll have a reader. So there will be multiple readers to a book, right? So we'll have a reader ID, reader name. There will be a reader ID. Next, there will be a reader name. Next, there will be a book ID. Now, you see, let us take one example. Let us take author ID. Let us take author ID is one. Name is uh, Samraju. Say his phone number is Send so phone number, okay. Now, similarly, here author details table is one, and his experience is say some 10 years experience. Qualification is say some PG. Now, by seeing these two tables, what will have this is a one to one association. One author, one, one author detail is exactly mapped with this. That means one record, one record, one record is mapped with this record. Right? So one to one. One to one. Right? Now you see here. Now, this author ID 1, this author ID 1 can write multiple books, right? Same author can write multiple books, right? Say, for example, now I'll say book ID. So, book name is say kind of, uh, book name is kind of uh, what you say is, uh, some java now the same author can write one more book that book id is two that book name is say some some spring or hibernate and then same author has written them. Now you see, this author, this author ID is appearing in two records here. That means, that means many records, that means many, many records. If it is a more than one record, it is a many record. Many records of this author ID is mapped to only one record. There is only one record. See, if you see, this is the primary key. 
This is the primary key. Okay, here also this will be the primary key. This ID is the primary. What is a primary key? The value of that primary key only appears in one record. It will not repeat. Okay, but here your author ID is not primary key here because the value is repeating here one one. So, but book ID is primary key because the value is unique across the rows. Now, here this is your primary key. Okay, and this will be your and this will be your foreign key. So this will be your foreign key. Which maps. So this foreign key is mapping to this primary key. This primary key ID. So foreign key value can this foreign key. So this foreign key is mapping to this table, this foreign key maps to the primary key of author table. Now, if you see this record, this author ID record is repeating, but that's why it's not primary key, it is a foreign key. So that's why this now this association. That means many records, many author ID, that means the records with the same author ID, many records are associated with one record. So this is your many to one association. Many to one association. Okay. Now, similarly, if you see here, Review ID. One book can have multiple reviews, right? Let me take like this. One. What is book ID one? Book ID one. Book ID two. Or book ID one, I'll say. Book ID one. Okay. Similarly, I'll have book ID one. I'll now put on it. So I'll put like kind of review ID one. Review ID two. So this description is a good book. This description is a bad book or an average book. That means one, one reviewer will give it is a good book. One reviewer will give an average book, but for it is for the same book ID. That means this book ID. For Java book ID, what is book ID one? It is Java. Okay, Java. So one description is good and one average. Now again, these two records, these two book IDs are mapped to one record here. Okay, are mapped to one record. Okay. Are mapped to one record or we can go in this way also. Now we'll go in this way. We'll go in this way. One book ID, one book is associated with multiple reviews. So that's why it is called one too many. So I'll say one book ID is associated with multiple reviews. So that's why this is called one to many. So one book is associated with multiple reviews, many reviews. Okay. Now, so the association between these two tables is one to one. Here you will have one many to one because many, many authors, I mean, like uh, many records of one author, many records of one because the same author is repeated across multiple rows. It is associated with one author table. Similarly, many records of one book ID is mapped with this or from the here, if you go from here, if you go one one book is having multiple reviews. See, the same book ID one is having multiple reviews. One reviewer will give it is a good book. One reviewer, see, reviews will not be always constant, right? It depends upon the user's choice, reader's choice. Now, if you see here, here, this is your primary key. 
This is your primary key. And this is your foreign key. So this is your foreign key and this is mapping to this is mapping to primary key of books table. So this is mapping to primary key of books table. Now, now if you see here, here I can have many readers will be reading many books, right? Many readers will be reading many books. Okay, just one minute. Huh? Just one minute. I'm getting one. Yeah, sorry, I got one call. Okay, shall we see tomorrow? I'll tell you this later. Till now, everyone understood this part, whatever I told you. What are I told till now? Everyone understood? So we'll see tomorrow this. I'll tell you tomorrow. So till this part, everyone is clear, right? This records, right? All right then, okay? So we'll see tomorrow then, okay then? Tomorrow we'll connect.